Western art, Western art in Australia has only been going for 200 years, but Western art in Europe dates back 2,000 years at least. And its development has been entirely different and, and totally isolated from the Oriental art. And therefore, it's developed in a, in a different way. And it's, it's only back some two to three hundred years that perspective was introduced as such into Western art. In Chinese art, even though they probably knew about it, they disregarded it, which had the effect of freeing them up mentally, and not being inhibited by, by the rules of perspective. From early days I had seen images of the landscapes of China, different to anything I'd known in Australia. Yellow Mountain, Lee River, long ago inspired me to one day paint these exotic subjects. More than just the landscapes, it tugged at my emotions. I was intrigued by the cormorant fishermen and vowed one day to see it for myself. That's why I came to China. The visit presented an opportunity for me to see as much Chinese art as I could absorb. Robert Lovett has been painting for more than 50 years. He first became known for his outback Australian themes, especially with horses and cattle. Later on, he diversified into a wider variety of subjects, the human figure, citizens, etc. He travels extensively and has painted many exotic themes from Asia, Europe, America and the Pacific Islands. Where this is? Yeah, I remember. This is in the garden in Shouqiao. So at first, Robert, I want to ask you, what encouraged you to take this trip to China? That's all your fault. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you, you remember we were flying back from uh, uh, Rome. Yeah, from Rome. And, and on Singapore Airlines. And you started shouting from three or four seat back, seats back. Yeah. Oh, I remember you had that, the, yeah. You had the in-flight magazine. Yeah, and there and was said, Yellow Mountain. Yes, yeah, Robert, you must that, paint. Robert, <laughs> you need to paint the Yellow Mountain. <laughs> okay, that's where we start. China? Yeah, I love, I love China, the beautiful parts. China is becoming very developed, but, but there are still some lovely old parts of China. Yeah. Esther, what's the name of that first little water village we went to in China? That is Zhaozhong. Zhaozhou? Yeah, Zhaozhong. Okay, I can't say it like you, you but... <laughs> because I'm Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm learning to be Chinese. Yeah. Good, uh, good, good, good. That was a beautiful place, yes. wasn't it? With all those lovely little arched bridges and the old houses. They were, what, yeah. 500 years old? More than that, a thousand. A thousand years old? A thousand, thousand. years old, yeah. yeah. Now it's very famous in China with uh, lots of tours, you can see. Yes, yes. I think we go to Shouqiao. 
This is oh, exactly it, where it, you, you, yes. have, you have this painting. So this how, is a park in Shouzhou. It, it was beautiful and this little uh, tea house there was something yeah. special set on the lake. It's got a long history too, Shouzhou. Shouzhou, yes. And they say that, you know, uh, besides the heaven, Shouzhou is the heaven in the earth. Heaven on earth. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, with, with some opaque colour. Okay. Uh -huh. You see, now there's another one down here. You remember helping me buy these brushes? Yeah, eh? in Tongxi. Oh, yeah. In Tongxi. Yeah. yeah. We didn't, have a, didn't we have fun? Yeah, we eh? have a good time with they, all they, these they, gardening. They're so beautiful. Yeah. That is the places for a lot of the painters, you know, I mean Chinese, you know, ink painters, they mm -hmm. go there to buy their brushes. You and, see and that the whole street is full of these brushes? Yes, yeah. yeah. But it's very old street. Yeah. Tungshi Street dates back 500 years to the Ming Dynasty. This is a little bit of China that's been preserved. The original houses built in that era by wealthy merchants, still with their original architecture and character. The street paved with stones from the nearby Yellow Mountain, still in their original condition. The shops sell a variety of, of curiosities, but the exciting thing is there are many shops here that sell Chinese handmade calligraphy brushes. We're talking about an artist in paradise. This is artist heaven. I'm sure I can get a bargain here. see all the structures and all the things you know and the people still live more or less the same kind of mm. life you mm. know in there yeah 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 the old facades of the buildings yeah are preserved the same yeah. as they were they're just being converted into shops yeah and uh, actually there's a lot of you know tv program you know they took the scene in there because mm -hmm. they are they are very old and they preserve it very well. Yeah. 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 So yeah, beautiful village. Yeah. I remember all these brushes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we, had a good, we had a good time in bargaining in there. Oh yeah. We're okay, we survived. <laughs> that man was uh, an artist. Yeah, he's an artist, you know. Well, we, 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 we talk about, you know, I saw the picture downstairs and then I saw that who's painting that and he said that he did. And then we went upstairs, you know, to the restaurant. That is not actually a restaurant. The house, That's the, with the main yeah. dining room upstairs, we saw that he has so many. He's a yeah. good artist. Lovely you know? little studio. Yeah, and, and, and he gave me uh, his calligraphy. Calligraphy. Which I have. 
I, I have here. Yeah, and you yeah. actually. Ah, okay. Uh, if you like, you can go up and have a look at his mm. painting. Yeah. Oh, right. Painting yeah. gallery upstairs. Yes, yes. No. This will, is from the Song Dynasty. Yeah. This is very old, but been refurbished for a few times. Mm. But this house is one one three two. <laughs> that is a long, long time That's ago. Old. 11, very old. Eleven hundred and thirty-two yeah, years old. Yeah, this is. Old. I had to get hungry. It's kind of. That's <laughs> The whole village only have 13 houses. That's why they said 13 houses. Where we get together and and this home village 13 houses. I said that why 13 houses? Because in the Song Dynasty, it's only 13 houses. Now they all gone. This is the only one left. So they call this one 13 houses. Yeah. Actually 13 houses means 13 buildings. This is for you. Oh, for you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I am, I am honoured. <laughs> this is my watercolour of Hong Kong village. Very nice and simple, but hard to look at it like that. It's just a piece of paper. I'll put it in the mat. At least to have a mat around it transforms it. streets, met people, dined there, sketched there, totally absorbed this wonderful old village. Now I'm trying to put all those feelings and emotions down on a piece of paper. and shapes should combine in such a way as to communicate the feelings of the artist to the viewer. I feel so blessed that I enjoy the simple things of life. This rectangle of paper here is a whole world to me, from which I derive tremendous pleasure and satisfaction. Well, we're in 
yellow mountain, you, you helped me make this seal. Yeah. And that's Robert Lovett in yeah. Chinese. The Robert in Chinese and the L, the yes. Gibson Robert, is yes. a combination of Chinese and you know English. But you know that Robert in China, every artist, when they finish the picture of calligraphy, they put their own chop on it. Everybody do that. Mm. So this is good. You are yes. one of the Chinese painters now. Yes, yes I'm using it. I'm <laughs> using it and uh, I appreciate it very much because uh, it, it gives a uh, uniqueness yeah. to my paintings of China. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> At last I have some luck. <laughs> You're a very not, good bargain. Not as good as in Yellow Mountain, you know, for these brushes. <laughs> oh yeah, right, yes. Which reminds me, uh, we went up to Yellow Mountain. Yeah, you remember the stair lift? Yep. The cable in, car? In the cable car. Yeah. yeah. We all rush in? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> granite peaks rearing up from the chasms, pointing to the heavens, a place of twisted pine trees. It is a place for contemplation and meditation. It brings one close to nature and humbles man by the sheer grandeur. No photograph or painting can ever do justice. Remember the oh my god steps. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I looked like up the hill and I said, oh my god. <laughs> Yellow Mountain. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. yeah. Yellow Mountain is 
I love it too, you know. So you got some paintings from Yellow Mountain, is it? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. See, uh, here. Yeah. A few here. of it, yeah. Yes, yes. And this this one here. Yeah, the big That's, one, yeah. Yeah. The, the, oh, it looks so... The, the mist rising up out of the valley. Yeah. And it was... The, the pine trees. It was quite a mountain, you know. Very yeah. different from the other a countries. Very mysterious place. Yeah. Very lovely. Jade Valley, it's a fast-moving subject and I'm trying to pick up this, this movement, this pace. The water is rushing down from Yellow Mountain at a breakneck speed through this wonderful gorge. Over the rocks, it tumbles down into, from pool to pool. The bamboo forests come right down the mountainside almost to the river's edge. And looking through the bamboo at the rushing water is quite a scene. Jade Valley has some brilliant colours. The colour of the water is incredible, a bright green. And where it goes into a deep pool, a dark blue. Then as it foams down past the rocks, it goes white and all shades of grey. Really, uh, very tricky to paint, but it's a matter of suggestion. I can only suggest what's there. Simplify. It's the artist's privilege to create, to make his own shapes. And you don't have to follow uh, literally what's before you. That'd be boring. You can do that with a camera. But to create a design and use the patterns that's, that's art. Then we went to Hangzhou. Yeah, you remember in the morning, early in the morning, you go there to look at this bird walking, you know, and the right. ballroom dancing, which the Chinese people they do that as a morning yeah. exercise. Yeah. They get up early there, don't they? Very early, right? yeah. <laughs> That's why they are very healthy. That's why they have a lot of old people. And you remember the Tai Chi? 
Oh, salt, yeah. you know, yeah. they do that as an exercise too. Oh, it's chi, and and and, uh, and there was a beautiful lady there, all in blue with a sword. So that we went to Xi Tang on the way to China. Zitang. I mean, on the way to Shanghai. Xi Tang. How another, do you find Xi Tang? And oh, another the, beautiful water village. Yeah. And I painted there. People sometimes ask me how I choose a subject. Well, of course, it must appeal to me in the first place. But apart from having uh, good design and uh, interesting colours and shapes, it must say something to me here. In other words, it must have emotion. If, this, if it doesn't do that, I can't really put my heart into it. The emotion will come through in the painting in the form of mood. Mood you can set, you can manipulate to some extent in the painting. For example, if you do a low key painting, it becomes a rather somber mood. Not necessarily, it can be very strong. Or a bright and colorful painting sets a lighter mood in a happier setting. But the initial mood of the subject must be there in the first place. It must have that emotion and that's what I try to express. As an artist, I tend to see things differently. I look for tones, shapes, colours lines and relationships. Not so much as objects, houses, boats, trees, horses, etc. And those colours and shapes and tones are put together to form a cohesive design and hopefully express the mood of the subject. Coating this board with gesso. Gesso is a, a type of paint with marble 
ground marble chips in it. It gives a lovely tooth for the paint. It's already got two coats on it. This is the third coat which I've toned. Makes it nicer to get to, to adjust the tones and the painting. I like painting on plywood, it's very durable. This is uh, Australian hardwood. With the modern glues, it's everlasting. Much more stable and permanent than canvas. I like to listen to music while I paint. Something classical, something that lifts my spirits, that makes me feel good. Something like Mozart or Vivaldi or Bach. And if you feel good, you, you work better, you produce better work. I'm talking about feel good. I, I like to paint happy, joyful paintings. I don't like morbid subjects. I, I think there's enough bad news in the world. We, we should have a bit of joy in our lives. Shanghai, an exciting city of 20 million people, a mixture of the new and the old. It has a diverse culture and history, and it's the economic center of China. Its growth is phenomenal. It's expanding at an ever-increasing pace. But I'm more interested in the old and the picturesque. So I hope to show you some remaining little bits of old Shanghai. Yes, it's becoming a, an ultra modern city. Once it was really. when I say old, built in early 20th century by the British and the French and various other nations with their current architecture of that time. So there's, there's a variety there of architecture and at night time the place just buzzes. You know. There's another part to Shanghai, the old part, yeah. very old part, and that's been developed into a modern shopping centre Mm. With, a, with an old Chinese flavour, it's very beautiful. Yeah. And in that complex is the Yuan Gardens, mm. old traditional Chinese gardens with ponds and pavilions and uh, lots of uh, big uh, carp. And then after Shanghai, we take our flight to where? Guilin. Guilin, yeah. Guilin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we flew over on China, China Airlines. And yeah, Guilin. Guilin, the river cruise. That's right. Yeah. So what do you think about the river cruise? Uh, Magnificent. Magic. Magic. Yeah. Yeah. The, the scenery. I've never seen anything like it. These wonderful limestone mountains just coming straight up like yeah. this out of the river. Do you notice that they have this scene, you know, in the ten dollar nook in China? This is the this is the scene, the river. Oh, I never the had mountain it, no. and the Li River. <laughs> yeah. The Li River. Yeah. It's probably one of the most scenic parts of China. The buffaloes, you remember? Yes. Oh dear. All in the water. It yeah. was so good. Yes. Yeah, that, that was one of the highlights of China. The history, uh, 
it's fascinating. It's a, it's a study in itself. Um, I'm more interested in the scenic and visual aspects, but you can't help uh, finding some history on the way. Mm -hmm. And it's so old. You know, uh, I come from Australia, which is only a young country. To go to a place like China where things date back a thousand, two thousand years, it's, it's quite amazing for me. So which region in China inspire you the most? Which I region? love the Yellow Mountain. The Yellow Mountain? Yellow Mountain's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Li River out oh. from Guilin. That's, uh, that's a magnificent place. Terraces out from there mm -hmm. called uh, the Dragon's Backbone. Yeah. And mm. up, up high in the mountains, we had to uh, go by foot, climb way up, but it was beautiful. The mountain, mountains are all serrated down in levels, and, and uh, everything is taken up by foot. There's no road. Do you think this is the highlight of this trip? I think Lee River. Lee River. Lee River. Lee River. It's it's quite it's quite an emotional painting. In fact, these days we don't use paint; we use emotion. And that's what I try to put into my paintings: the feeling. I've spent something like 
over 50 years learning the what I call the carpentry of painting, the techniques. And by now, I should be sufficiently familiar with that to be able to focus on other things. And hereby I can focus on, on the inner self, to put something of myself in it. And this is the modern way. The old masters merely focused on the subject, their model, and so on. And the Impressionists came along, and they were more interested in their palette, and the colours they were using, and the way they used them. And then in the 20th century came the moderns, who were more interested in the surface they're working on, the canvas, the appearance of that. Well, I think I've gone a bit beyond that now. I'm focusing on my inner self to try and speak from the heart and express what I'm feeling and put that into my landscapes. So I did a painting before she you see? Oh, I remember not that. Not framed yet down in the old part of the town. Yeah, we no? remember that. We, yes. We took the tricycle to go there. Yes, and... Uh, um, Before the fruit and all that. We had... Uh, with, with Andrew, we went down there and took lots of pictures. Yeah. And it was yeah. very busy and very old and all these little markets. It was lovely. Yeah. Robert, I noticed that every time when you're passing through the rice paddles, you got so excited. <laughs> Why? I, I love the rural scene in, in China, the rice paddles.
love it. I seek the unusual, the different, the beautiful. I travel with my paint box and I look for the people. I try to get inside their culture and I find wonderful, wonderful subjects to paint. It's travelling with a purpose and I get great joy from what I do. There's another part of Robert Lovett's world and that's within this little rectangle of canvas or paper. When I'm in there I'm totally focused. The whole world can pass me by without me being aware of it. I'm totally alone but it's a challenge to roll a dice in that square, in that rectangle and see what happens. After many years of experience I seem to be able to put things in the right places and come out with a few winners. But one keeps waiting for that elusive masterpiece that will one day take place within the rectangle. good there was the uh, cormorant fishing. Oh yeah, I remember that, the cormorant fishing. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, we got a boat and went fishing with this man. A way of life had been known poetically in China as the fisherman's light on the Lijiang River. Sometimes I work for 10 days without a break. Some nights I catch one or two catties, and other nights four to eight. This is the painting I've been looking forward to the whole tour. The, the cormorants, it has terrific drama and I'll try and bring that drama out with tremendous contrast. I'm putting in a, a dark background and working in acrylic and uh, I can work on a large scale with a big brush with that and it's, it's a lot of fun. This is my sketch. This is how I want it laid out on the board. 
the raft and the cormorant man will be to one side and then it'll be balanced by these cormorants out further in the water and make a nice balance of a design. Looks good. China is a people place. Naturally, with a billion people there, it's a feature. Every landscape is filled with people. I love that. I love masses of people, crowds of people in, within a landscape. I love the more intimate people doing, doing their thing in marketplaces and uh, various uh, aspects of their, of their work and so on. Whereas Australia is a wide open place with a small population. You go out in the country, you can, you can go for miles and, and not see a person. So that is a large contrast. Not a great deal of difference, but they do uh, exquisite watercolours with a very Chinese influence. They're very soft, very wet into wet. A technique which I admire very much. Uh, you also see fairly traditional Western style painting. But the outstanding thing in China is their traditional Chinese brush painting. China is developing at an incredible pace. It's fast becoming a sophisticated industrial country on a grand scale. But scratch the surface and you'll find the heritage and the culture is alive and well. I've only managed to touch on the incredible history of this ancient society. But I have met some very interesting people I've seen some beautiful Chinese art. But as an artist, I'm impressed by the physical beauty of the ancient villages, the mountains, the rivers, and the rice fields. And having been exposed to these things, I'm inspired to continue painting these wonderful subjects that are China. The China experience will be with me for many years to come. <laughs>